Hello, my name is Isabel Rakama. Welcome to this new creative session using Affinity Designer. I'm gonna walk you through my process creating a naturalistic or scientific illustration of a butterfly. We're gonna be using Affinity Designer. If you saw maybe my previous creative session, you might remember that back in the day we were using Affinity Designer to create an stylized colorful landscape out of a reference. But in this occasion, we're going to do a completely different kind of illustration. It's going to be also using references, but in this case, we have to be very accurate. We have to just portray exactly what it is. We will be starting with the designer persona with vectors. Then we will pass to the pixel persona with bitmaps. We will combine the best of both worlds, which is one of the strengths of affinity designer and well, the affinity suit. For you to know a little bit more about my background, I've been teaching this subject matter for years now, both online and offline, in places such as the University of Aveiro in Portugal, for both scientists and artists alike. And I do also publish regularly in magazines such as the Nature Conservancy magazine and do work for publishers. So in the case you're interested in this subject matter and you want to know more, be sure to reach out to me through my website because I offer mentorship and one-on-one -on -one online training. Now let's have fun. So, First of all, we have to create our canvas. I'm going to show you my settings. Um, I set it for print, just in case I want to print it. Centimeters, but you can use millimeters or whatever you feel more comfortable with. More or less, this is the dimensions I'm using and 300 dpi. So now, <clears throat> I always set up a background. It's just a rectangle with a neutral color, something like along these lines, gray, light. And I do this because once I'm painting, it will be much easier for me to distinguish and have more contrast when I'm painting little things like hairs. Just imagine I have like something like a white hair or whatever. If I had a white background, I wouldn't see it. So try always to put something along these lines. And here I have um, a couple of references. One is um, the image I took at the butterfly house. So apart from the images I took myself, at the butterfly house. I also found on Wikipedia this one, which I really like by Charles J. Sharp. And this other one by Didier De Quens, which also has the ventral view, which I'm not gonna use, but it's nice to see it. So I'm gonna be using these two also to help me out uh, with the references. And I'm going to adapt this together with the other one here, which is going to be the one I'm going to use for the shape of the wing. But you can see here, and just because this butterfly is alive, you can see it has the emolymph, which is the equivalent to, to blood in, in the butterfly. So just because it's alive, it looks like, you know, like it's alive. <laughs> but this one, it's, you know, dead. So the body doesn't really look very well. So. I will be using both of them, combining them. So one important thing to do is first off, I'm going to drag a ruler to the center of my canvas. These ones, I don't need them. They were there from some other drawing I did. So um, I have the middle point here and I'm going to just, just because I want you to remember that you don't need to draw the whole thing. You just need half of the butterfly okay now this one that is below i'm going to make it visible and right now what i need to do is combine the two of them in such a way that it makes sense okay because we just need the the body we are going to trace the upper side of the wing Using the pen tool, I prefer the pen tool over um, the vector brush tool because it allows me to control the number of anchor points that we're going to be using, but up to you, use whatever you prefer. Usually I use a thick um, stroke that is clearly visible with a really visible color. And I'm going to be using a method that I teach in my classes, which is the easiest way you can trace if you're not good with a pen tool. So going with sharp notes, we're going to go along all the edge of the wing. Oh, 
all with straight lines or segments. And we're going to close this shape now. And the next thing is going to be just pulling in between all those notes in such a way that you're going to get all the curves from this wing. And the next thing to make these sharp notes softer, smoother, we're going to be using the corner tool. This is a really fantastic method to get things done quickly. And even for those with uh, little experience using the pen tool, it really works. We are going to create now the hind wing, the one on the bottom. You can see they overlap and I'm not sure if at the end I want them to overlap or maybe I leave a little gap because this is again a naturalistic plate. For sure you don't want it to look like this, overlapping like this. You want your butterfly to spread its wings, to show all the beauty, to show as many features as possible. Uh, but since I don't see this area, I have two options. One, just imagining it by following this arc in here. It wouldn't be that difficult. But if you want to be absolutely accurate, just have to look for another reference where it's shown. And for example, we have the other um, side of this butterfly, the ventral view, showing the shape. So now it would be just a matter of resizing it and tracing over it to get the right shape. But I'm not going to do that. It's just a little tip I gave you. Let's continue tracing over a wing. So let's start painting the wings. We're going to start with one up. You see here, I have a copy of it. What I'm going to do first off is rasterize it like so. And I'm going to create just a rough, now I can use this one happily, just to rough mask around it. So why am I doing this? Well, why am I doing this? Well, because I want my reference to be close by. So when I zoom in, I can see what's going on more or less. I mean, more or less. Um, but actually I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller because I don't need it so big anyways. Something like here, a reference close by. Because this, right now, is going to be covered. I'm not going to see below. And let's create a base color, which would be the most prominent in here. Not the darkest, not the brown, orange, but not the lightest either. But in between, like so, right now, like this. So we have it there. Perfect. Now we're going to paint inside this object here. For that, we need to come here to insertion and click Insert Inside Selection. That way it's going to clip mask everything that I paint. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down a little bit the opacity so I can see a little bit through and I can be more accurate when it comes to tracing all these nerves in here and uh, the positioning of the, the um, spots and all that, okay? Uh, let's just make it 75, something like that. Right. So, painting inside this object First, I'm going to block the main areas. For that, I come here to the, to the pixel persona. I click on my brush and I have here a selection of my brushes. Actually, well, this is something I use when I'm doing insects most of the times. Um, nothing special. All of these come with Affinity Designer. I think I did this one, but just most of them are really simple. And actually, I'm going to use this one called Round Light Brush number two, which is the one I use the most. So I'm going to put things in there so I can see properly. I mean, as you can see, I have all my brushes and all my panels on the right side of the screen because I'm left-handed to just position yours wherever you feel more comfortable. I also like to have the swatches and the color panel together, uh, brushes and quick effects together and layers standalone. Okay. And again, painting inside the upper wing, we're going to select the dark color. Uh, probably it's a good idea also to create a palette out of this document as document palette like this. So right now, what is taken is all the colors that you're seeing in this canvas. That's why we have this little blue here because we have the stroke in there. Well, probably I should have created it before 
Okay, so let's start painting. Um, we select our upper wing and we come to insertion and we said insert inside the selection, like so. Um, we're going to create a pixel uh, layer inside and we're going to start painting. I'm going to grab this color and now coming to color and clicking on opacity, we change to noise and I'm going to apply a little bit of noise. I'm going to be using this uh, round light brush. So let's start. Something like this. I'm, I'm just going to mark the main areas. But as you can see, I'm not being overly careful. Just want to have a notion of more or less where they go. Okay. Uh, with a lighter color, something like this, I'm going to mark these ones. For this, I'm going to select the pressure brush button there. Roughly, like, I just want to see a little bit where I need to put my nerves right now. And I'm going to keep on working the wing. Um, let's just grab the smudge tool. Going to pull down the strength so it's not so rough. And make sure you're always in, in the right layer. And I'm going to go like this. I'm just uh, blocking out things, okay? See, for example, here, you don't have that. And, well, I've done this on purpose. You see, there is nothing like that in there, but it doesn't really matter. Right now, um, I am selecting my erase brush tool and I'm using, this is called Spray 6-2. So what I need to do is simply this. So on my layer and I'm going to start erasing, okay? If I have this, as I just mentioned, it's going to be more accurate and it's going to work with my pressure. The pressure I apply to the brush, the eraser in this case, okay? So let's just go like this and like this. Well, actually, <laughs> this is like a line here that I should have done, but I mean, you get the idea. If I was working in a real project, obviously I would have to be as accurate as possible, otherwise the scientist is going to tell me, hey, no, this is not the way. This pattern looks. <laughs> Repeat it. And basically, like for example, this one has uh, a gap in here because I have my recent colors in here. It's very easy to just select this one and apply a little bit of paint in there and correct things that I didn't before. See the texture? It's always up to the artist to decide whether they prefer to work with a very simple brush like I just do and then applying effects to it with the eraser. Uh, so this is something you're going to have to figure out yourself the way you prefer to work. Some people is quite surprised when I tell them that sometimes I'm not painting, I'm just erasing to, to apply these effects. So I think that's also an interesting tip. And let's go. I'm going to keep on working till I more or less have the pattern finished. Now you can see that most of what I do is switching between the brush tool, the eraser tool, and the smudge tool, and stacking different objects with some kind of hierarchy where I put the, the main pattern or spots or stains, call it whatever, on top. And then I create some highlights and some variation in color like I'm doing right now. And, and that's more or less what it takes because, you know, I'm basically using two or three brushes here. And that's basically it. Well, that and a little bit of practice and patience.
I also know that many of you would like uh, this video to be real time, but uh, even if I'm working much faster than I usually do, even so, it would be overly long. I'm trying to give you uh, the main tips that you need in order to create something like this. If you have doubts, reach out to me. Or also, if you'd like better insights and real-time help, mentorship, well, reach out to me through my website because I offer this mentorship and these classes. So it's a matter of talking it over. Yeah, it's worth. Once you learn how to do one, probably you can understand how to do all of the species. So it's another option. I don't like the nurse very much, but um, I don't want to be here forever. So I think I'm going to call it a wing. Now it's the time to create the little threads in here because, you know, it's not cut like this. The butterfly has some little threads, <laughs> not sure how to call them, um, all around the, the edge of the wing. So to work that, what I like to do is first off, I'm going to duplicate the upper wing and I'm going to um, put this one below. It's just like a safety copy. Okay, I'm going to lock it. I don't need it. It's just in case I mess up things. I always like to have a copy, actually. <laughs> so this one, I'm going to rasterize it. And right now, this is just a pixel, okay? We don't have layers anymore. We don't have stacking objects, nothing. It's just one object in here, okay? Now, um, I'm going to create a, a layer just to work properly. And I'm going to insert it there. So and this is... Upper uh, left wing. Okay. And we are going to work on this. The first thing I like to do, and because these edges are overly um, sharp, I'm going to wrap the smudge tool. So 32 more or less. And I'm going to go, actually, I'm going to reset the rotation because. It's more trustworthy that I don't have any of the edges, you know, sloppy and, and jacked. So I'm going to go all over the, the wing, the edge of the wing, just to soften it, but very careful. Okay. Very, very careful. Here, I don't need to be so careful because we have the threads and I'll paint over. And actually, I can start, you know, suggesting a bit of that. And now you have two options. You can just pull this up and go really with this pressed and go really, really with a small uh, size. And you can start, I'm, I'm gonna zoom in because otherwise I just don't see it. Uh, and you can start, you know, going like this. Being careful because every time you use this match tool, it removes paints from the area that you're smudging, actually. So being very careful, you can just do it like this, okay? Or you can also combine it with uh, the pen tool, uh, with the brush tool, sorry. So you can combine both methods and and that's the way you're gonna do these little threads. Every now and then just uh, reset the rotation and take a look at what you're doing because sometimes you may think it looks great and it doesn't. So just be mindful of that. Okay, so I'm going to proceed and do exactly as I said, and we'll be done with this, okay? So once we have the wing finished, we are going to do the same with the one uh, below. 
with Hindwind. Um, the process is exactly the same, so I'm going to skip it for this video, but it will be exactly the same, okay? So I'm going to work on it, and I'll see you when we start creating the body of the butterfly. Now we're going to make everything visible, we're going to remove the background and we can compare one and the other side by side. If you squint your eyes, it's going to be even harder to distinguish which one is which. I would like the bottom in the hind wing, the bottom little spots that I did, I would like them to be more separated from the edge, but um, I didn't zoom out enough. So since this is a demonstration, I'm not going to change that now. And also I'm going to put a shadow below the upper wing because it's going to make it stand out more like it's overlapping and it's on top of the other one. So these are the settings, just uh, little details. Now let's go with the second part of this session where we are going to see how to create the, the body of the butterfly. So here we have the reference for the body, at least for the shape of the body, which is this one that I put on top of the rest of the layers. Now, just as we did with the wings, we only need to create half of it. And because I like uh, the way it's presented for this kind of illustration, I'm going to simply draw the silhouettes and then I will use different references in order to get the features right. Of course, if I was working for a real project, I would need to count the segments in the abdomen, look at the thorax, exactly how it looks, and, and all these kind of things just to, to, you know, create it exactly as it is. But let's take it easy <laughs> and let's just uh, create something nice here and let's just try to reproduce it, even if it doesn't have the perfect features. So I'm going to create now the segments of the body, which I think are 10 for a butterfly. But as I said, well, Let's take it easy. And we're going to do the same we did with the wings, which is creating um, a base color. I have another image here from Wikipedia. It's uh, also a good reference image. I'm going to resize it a little bit. Something like that. And I'm going to zoom in so I can see better. Okay. Now we have the body here and we are going to go again to the pixel persona and we're going to do exactly as we did with the wings. We're going to paint inside. So let's, first of all, let's just create this layer here and Let's paint. So grabbing maybe this one because it has a little bit of texture. Let's start painting. Let's try with this. Actually, no, let's try with something lighter. Think that in scientific illustration, the convention is that the light comes from the left. Okay, so this area here on the left is going to be a little bit more um, illuminated than the other one on the right. This is a convention. For me, as a left-handed person, sometimes it's quite uncomfortable. And let's just start painting. Okay. 
go like this. Okay. Now, grabbing this other one, and let's just start marking all the areas. Now, let's just grab different colors to mix together. Also, the, the base color is helping us to have some variation. I'm going to remove that in there. And again, the smudge tool to blend things. Like so. And as I mentioned, the light is coming from here. Then we will duplicate this to have the body, the complete body. And you will see how I create a layer on top to give it a little bit of volume with the shadow. Okay. Now you can see there's like a whitish rim on top of the shadows I just created. So let's just do that. Okay. This should be enough for now. Now let's go with this area here. Let's just grab some colors from here. And now with this much tool. Changing the colors we apply to the thorax. Now we're going to select everything, the body and the wing. We're going to group it. Okay, that's it. And we are going to make a copy of it. We have it here. And now we're going to mirror it, like so. And pressing Shift, we move it to the side, like so. And as you can see, we have a butterfly, more or less, there. So the process, as I said, is going to be exactly the same. I'm going to finish the, the body. And once I'm done, using exactly the same method, we will create the antennas and we will be done. One thing interesting doing is grabbing the body and grouping it together, like I just did. I'm going to put it on top, like so, and I'm going to paint the whole thing until it's done. And the other one, which is here, I'm going to move it to the other side. And so I have both references to work from. So now I'm going to work on top of these two layers. OK, I'm going to create a new layer. So everything I create, it's going to be inserted in this group. Now, another interesting thing, um, this is symmetrical and I want to paint right now the same I paint in this area. I want to paint in here, but I already duplicated, so I need some symmetry. So for that, I use exactly that symmetry, like so. I'm going to put it there, click in shift, opa, click in shift, and I'm going to move it a little bit like there. Perfect. So now I'm going to lock it so it doesn't move. Now we're going to start painting 
with this symmetry and we're going to say mirror because I want it on both sides. If I do it like this, this is what you're going to see. But if I don't mirror it, what you're going to see is one on top of the other. And that's not what we want. So let's check mirror and let's start. Oh, I'm painting with very little texture. I'm going to just try this one, something like that. Also, remember, you don't want it to be absolutely symmetrical. You want some symmetry for sure, but not complete symmetry, okay? Remember, we're not painting inside the object, so you're going to maybe go outside the boundaries. You can always duplicate this and put one inside this one and the other one inside the other side. That way, it's not going to pass beyond your boundaries. I always like to create an overall layer on top for things like latest touches. So now selecting again here, which corresponds to this. I'm going to paint inside that area. Even though I don't see it there, I'm just doing this because that's the light coming from the left side, as I just mentioned, something like that. Say something like that. <laughs> it's not perfect at all, but something like that. And a little bit of a smudge tool. And the same on the other. Maybe this is way too dark. It's way too dark. Let's just make it a little bit more subtle. Now, once I'm more or less happy with it, I like to create a layer on top of the whole group. Usually what I do is just put the same color. So when I'm working, I know what I'm doing. This layer on top is going to be for fine tuning the whole thing to just give the last of the um, details like I'm gonna do now. Now you see the edges here, they are too hard. With this group, what I like to do, and this is the way I do it, some may think there are better ways, but this is the, the way I like to do it. This one, I'm going to just block and hide. This one, I'm going to rasterize, like so. And now I'm going to smudge a little bit the edges, like with the, with the wings. Ah, that's too much, too hard. So be careful with that, just want a little bit of Smudging, not too much. It's just not to make the edges so unrealistic. Now let's zoom out completely. And yeah, more or less it's done. I mean, usually when I have references, I like to have highlights and, and shadows more prominent in such a way that it makes the whole subject look more three-dimensional and more realistic. But I also would like, let's, let's call it body. Body, okay. And let's make it green, like it's finished, let's say. And I'm probably going to add a quick effect, an outer, sh an outer shadow. Very subtle, very, very, very subtle. And again, the shadow is to the right because the light comes from the left. I kind of feel like this body is a little bit 
tail. So I'm going to try something. I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to use uh, apply a blend mode to see if that could be a quick fix. Color burn. I think it looks good. So again, I group it and I call it body. And now it's just a matter of adding some, you know, detail. Because as you can see, this is the end of the wing and it should be attached to it. So usually what I do is I paint on top. Okay. And this is just a matter of, you know, working it a little bit more until it looks as you prefer. All right, so we're going to create the antenna and we should be done. Okay, now you can see I have my antenna in place. I already have done it. Um, I want to, to tell you that I've done it here in the designer persona, even though there are a thousand ways you could do this. I grabbed the pencil tool and I used a little bit of pressure. So you can see in here, um, in order to, you know, you see it now, I can make it thicker or thinner. And that's exactly what I what I wanted because if you look at the original, it's there's some variation in the width of the antenna. So that's there. I also created this little the proboscis, which is the little sucking thing in the mouth. Um, and now, well, I'm going to paint inside this because uh, if I do it here in the designer persona, you're gonna get this. You're gonna get paint also here, and we don't want that. In any case, and as I said before, it's always good to have your reference side by side. So in that case, you can, you know, see more what's going on for your drawing. And so I'm going to place those orange dots and spots. And again, I repeat, it's just a matter of choosing your the, the way you, you, you work more comfortable. You know, it wouldn't be a good idea to leave the stroke as it was because it would look too unrealistic. So you want to give it, like I'm doing now, some color there. Uh, the process is not uh, very well done, but <laughs> could have done a much better job <laughs> in there. Uh, where is my proboscis? It's here. Okay, so I'm going to just quickly try to fix it a little bit because it doesn't look very well. I'm also copying my antenna and mirroring it. Just place it exactly where it corresponds. Once we are done, completely, completely done, uh, I like to, usually I make it slightly smaller so it fits well in my canvas. Mm. And the color of the background, I just select well, whatever that works well for me in this case. And again, I like to create a shadow so it pops a little bit. It, the, the wings, for example, already have the upper wing, uh, a shadow that we created to make this stand out a little bit more than the other one, just to convey the idea that it's overlapping it on top. Uh, but again, uh, I like to create something that um, makes it the whole stand out a little bit more. I'm going to create a new layer, put it below. With my brush tool, I'm going to put the hardness down to zero, opacity 20, flow 20, and without any kind of pressure. And whatever I don't like, 
I just remove. Okay, so um, let's now just talk about things like I'm interested in, in highlighting. Um, before you rasterize your your butterfly, of course, you always keep um, a non-rasterized copy of it. Um, and this is because, for example, right now I'm looking at it and I see some gaps in here that I don't really like, especially in here and in here. And this is because... Well, I should position better the, the wings. So coming to my wings, this is it. Okay. I'm going to change the center to here, exactly there. And it's going to rotate from exactly that point, like so. And now I'm going to move it a little bit. And I think overall it looks much better. Also because we get this little gap in here, which, well, it's exactly what we want. This one, uh, instead of repeating the operation, I'm going to get rid of it. And I'm going to copy the whole thing again, mirroring it so they look exactly the same. Yeah, here we are. We're done. Obviously, you just need now to, to say if this is a male or a female. This one, I'm not really sure. Um, it looks to me like it's a male because of the, you know, ending, but I'm not sure. <laughs> so, you know, you put the, the usual symbols for male and female, and also you want to, to put the, the name of the specimen. And also you uh, need to tell what's the the size of this specimen so say this one is five centimeters you put here a measure and and you tell people you know so they can more or less have an idea of how big it is okay so now let's just uh, finish this tutorial uh, thank you for being here i hope you learned a lot if you want to learn more just reach out to me and see you next time thanks a lot bye